you're driving on long trips, check engine light comes on. Define long. Like, oh, hour long. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for checking out my channel. So, brief introduction. I own this uh, 2008 Volvo C30 with a camel wrap. And I also own that white BMW 535i back there with the bronze wheel. And uh, surprise, surprise, I own something else. So let's go outside and look at it. All right, so as I alluded to in the video, I picked up uh, something new to me. It is a 1999 Subaru Forester. But yeah, I picked it up last night uh, for 700 bucks. One of my friends went with me. He actually test drove the car. He actually turned it on. I have not yet sat in the driver's seat. I have not turned on the car. So I honestly don't know. Um, what the driving dynamics says there are a number of um, different things I wanted to walk through and then kind of talk through what my plans are for the for the car got the PCB is backed up it's on it so you, you got a little actually it might even be the seal on this thing okay it's got a vacuum leak somewhere I don't know where it is so and if you drive it on long trips check it till it comes on the fine law I Oh, hour. Okay. It pushes oil out. Okay. Yeah, right, so it's right on point right now. Okay. All right, so we got oil. Yeah, but I got oil in the back of the car. Okay, good. We got a clean title on it. Mm -hmm. It's got current. It has current emissions. Okay. It needs a AC compressor. It locked up on us. Okay. But and then I've got a power steering pump because I thought it was going bad, but it was just empty. The temperature sensor right here mm -hmm. is because the dashboard, the gauge went bad on the dash. We got this is how we bought it like that. But the temperature reads on the the little sun probe thing. Five. Uh, it reads solid. Need one of those. Need one of what? One of those. What? What's what? Look, turn the car this back. Right on. Here? No, turn the car back. Oh, uh, this thing? The balancer? Yeah. It weebles. You know, yeah, it's shot. When he said a balancer. Watch. <laughs> done it all right now this temperature thing this thing hasn't moved all day yeah. hello hello Some of the good points with the car is it does have uh, new tires. I believe the owner told me they're new tires. The car is, um, it has a clean title. It does have an aftermarket radio with uh, Bluetooth on it. Um, it runs, it starts. There is a full size spear in the trunk. What else is good? Um, there's seats on the inside. There's a roof rail up here on the car. And what I really liked about it is the stance where it kind of sits, you know, a little higher than your normal car. But, um, and it also has emissions. So um, Georgia has like 159 counties that um, make up the state. And I happen to somehow end up living in one of the 13 counties that require annual emissions. We don't do inspections like they do in the Northeast, but every year we're supposed to do emissions in our car. So this one, the emissions was done um, this year, I believe. So I will not have to worry about that for the next year as it transfers to the new owner upon purchase. So I don't really see this as a negative. Um, it's just something I typically do when I buy a car anyway. The interior is uh, in need of some uh, cleaning, but this is gonna be taken care of. I have a shop back and I also have 
one of those extractors that I can use to like clean up the floor and suck everything out. The door panels are all in good shape. Can I see all the controls there? Um, the dash looks pretty good. There's an aftermarket thermostat. Gotta figure out what that is. It didn't seem to work last night, but the car didn't overheat on the way home when my friend was driving it home. So the interior door and panel looks good. There's no major rips and cracks in the seats. Um, again, definitely needs to be vacuumed out. Um, but the seats look pretty good. Right? So the overall condition, once cleaned of the interior, is gonna be, you know, really, really good. The glass is, uh, the glass. There's no chips or cracks in the glass. Um, there is some little dents and bangs around the car, but I mean, it's a 1999, so there appear to have been some damage here. A couple of years ago, we had like a snow pocalypse here in Atlanta, and I think the owner may have either slid into something or something slid into the owner. This is a complete sheet of ice, sheet of ice. Kind of a sheet of ice. Car spinning out. He is spinning right now. There's ice on the road. So they replaced this door. You can see the door has a different color from the door up front and they may have tried to do some repair here when you open it you can see this door is the interior is like red so this is the first time i'm trying to um pop the hood i'm not sure where the latch is oh it's right here it's not that difficult all right all right so let's go ahead and pop the hood oh, this thing is heavy all right, it has one of those sticks. There's an engine, but there are some issues with the engine. I believe the harmonic balancer is on its way out, so that needs to be addressed. I was told that um, the PCB box needs to be replaced as well, as does the crank position sensor I think that's it the owner pointed that out to me as one of the items that need to be replaced it throws a code um, he also said that oil when he drives oil comes up through this little uh, cap here on the oil filler so one of the things I did when I first got in I put this box under the car to see how much leaking it had and there were like only four spots after I left it overnight so not too bad checked the engine to see if there were any codes and we pulled two so there was a misfire on cylinder one and two and from what I hear doing spark plugs on this thing is uh, not for the faint of heart um, other things that I was told was on the front driver side the CV axle is clicking so that might need to be replaced um, one big thing is the thermostat uh, the owner told us that the thermostat does not work maybe the gauge doesn't work so what they did was they wired in this device here that they got off of wish uh, when we were driving the car last night i noticed that did not work um, the car didn't overheat best of our knowledge we got it home we drove about 50 miles with it and got it here with no issue. There are exhaust leaks in the car. Um, so I think it's at the manifold, the exhaust manifold. It, maybe the gasket might need to be replaced. And the exhaust rattles. And also the exhaust does not have like a tip at the end. Well, it was there, but the owner wanted it for a car that he's gonna get. Um, I had no big deal with it. But you know, I'm taking everything in stride um it also needs a blower mo motor and then i believe the ac condenser might be bad as well so all of these things need to be kind of looked into let me go crank the car up a few minutes later all right so i started on the, on the first crank definitely can smell the exhaust all right, so let me turn this thing off and I'll talk you through what my plans are for this for this um, project. All right, so as I mentioned, there are some positives with the car and then there are some things that need to be worked on. So 
Why did I buy this? I've always had this desire to have something that can go off-road. I did try to take the Volvo off-road once and that didn't go too well. So I needed something with a little more ground clearance. So that's basically what this is going to be um, turned into. Something that can be a little lifted. Um, I don't think I'll be doing extreme rock crawling or anything with it. But I just need to be able to, you know, drive it in places that you definitely can't take a BMW or a Volvo. Yeah, so my plan really is to give this like a two inch lift after it's all mechanically sorted out. Get some accessories for the roof of the car. Uh, you know, make it look like I know what the heck I'm doing when I go off road. But uh, yeah, that's it. We're gonna turn this into an off roader.